um, I remember, uh, I believe it was April of that year, my dad and I were coming back from um, umpire's clinic down in Indiana, and I walked in the door, and my mom's sitting on the couch, and she has four, three or four uh, syringes sitting on the table, and she's crying, and uh, she went through my room while I was gone, and you know, I looked at her and I denied the whole thing. That's not me. That's, no, that, that's someone else's. Like, that's, it's in my room. But that's not me. So I walk out. I can't face, I can't face it. I leave. And I go, kind of just mosey around people's couches, stay at drug dealers' houses, continue doing what I was doing. And uh, shortly after that, I, you know, I ran out of money, had nothing to do. I came home and I kind of had the scapegoat of, I had nowhere else to go, so I was like, okay, let's, let's try to get some help. I didn't want help, but it was to get back in my parents' house. So I went to Genesis, I did some programming there, and nothing really changed. It was just to get people off my back. And uh, so August of 2010, um, I, was, I went to a buddy's house with a good friend of mine. It was his birthday, and we were going to play some video games. Before we went down to the basement, I told him I had to use the bathroom. He wasn't it. He didn't use. He didn't do any of that. He's a good friend of mine. I went to his bathroom. I shot up heroin and I overdosed. And uh, his dad broke down the bathroom door because I was in there for so long and uh, called the paramedics. My parents came to the house. Paramedics came. I left to go in the back of the ambulance and uh, the cops searched me as I walked out of the house. And I had heroin on me and. So I went to the hospital, they revived, you know, they did the test and stuff like that, and I left the hospital in handcuffs. So now I have legal problems. So I sit in jail overnight, I go to court, I get a signature bond, I come out, and I go home, and nothing changes. It stops me, and slow, shortly, jump back into what I was doing, continue using heroin, and, um, I came home on December 23rd of that year, two days before Christmas from work with my dad and my mom had my bags packed in the back hall and she said, don't even come to my house. She said, you can leave. So I grabbed my bags, I cut it out and I'm walking. I don't even know where I'm going. I'm trying to find somewhere to go. It's freezing cold outside, I'm walking. I remember stopping in a park, shooting up heroin, ended up finding a buddy's house and I did that for about a week. And uh, the day after my birthday, January 1st, um, I, uh, I came home and I said I need help and again it was I had nowhere to go so this is what I'm going to do I'm going to play these cards and so as part of my because I was still fighting my case uh, they said okay you can go to an inpatient rehab we'll, we'll, we'll delay your, your, you know, your sentencing and so I went down to Iowa for a 60 day treatment I completed the treatment I came back March 2011 and I got sentenced on March 23rd, 2011. Because I went to the treatment, they gave me two years of probation with a without sentence of 18 months in prison and two years supervision. Uh, two weeks after I got sentenced, I overdosed in the Applebee's parking lot in West Bend. Uh, and I woke up in the hospital about five hours later and the nurse told me, she said, I don't know how you're alive right now. She said, you're lucky to be alive. That someone passed, walked past your car in the parking lot, you were slouched over, your face was blue, and they called the paramedics. She said, I, again, I don't know how you're alive, but it's a miracle that you're alive. You know, I don't know what you're doing out there, but you need to get some help. Well, because I was on probation, I got arrested, and they sent me to a prison for a 90-day drug treatment program. So I went through that. I got out in September of that year. And not even a month later, I was back in jail for failing the drug test. Um, so went into jail. I did another program in jail. I got out uh, December 29th of 2011, uh, two days before my birthday. Spent the birthday with the family. Things seemed to be going all right. And I decided, OK, my problem is heroin. So I can, I can drink. I can go to the bar. I can do all that fun stuff my friends are doing. So that's what I started doing. I got a job in bar graphics, and every day after work, I would go to the bar and drink. And it didn't last very long. You know, going to the bar and drinking and getting messed up just led me right back into that life. And uh, shortly, you know, I went back to, you know, it was in heroin. And uh, 2012, I believe it 
believe it was September. Uh, I was down in Milwaukee picking up uh, 53rd in Lisbon, I believe. I pulled into the Burger King with a friend, shot up, overdose. Woke up in the back, the paramedics pulling me out of the car, taking me in the back of the ambulance, and taking me to the hospital. So I'm sitting in the hospital. They released me somehow, even though I'm under supervision. And a week later, my PO finds out about it, arrests me, and he replicates me, and he sends me to prison. So I go to prison, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do some time, whatever. So I do my time, and while I'm in prison, nothing changes. I'm using when I'm in prison because drugs are in prison. So, same thing. I'm using, I get out in July of 2013, and um, by August of 2013, I'm back in the county jail again for a three way. And uh, my PO comes up and gives me a 90 day APR with Huber. So I complete that. Um, I get out two days before Thanksgiving, spend Thanksgiving with the family, uh, spend Christmas with the family. And, uh, you know, but nothing really changed. I, was, I started playing the game of using around the PO visits. Okay, well, if I stop, I can pass a drug test for them and I won't get it. You know, this is all, I'll find ways where I can use and I can live a manageable life. And nothing seemed to work. 